Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 524. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the emotional side of investing. Yes, it's called sentiment when you're an investor, and it's one of the most important things that you really need to master when you want to be a good stock investor. And this is something that I've talked about a little bit in the past, but it really is an important concept. And I'm going to share an article with you today talking a little bit about that, and then also share my thoughts and experiences about it, because really mastering your emotions with investing is so critical. There's a lot of fear in the market, always, and I always say that bull markets climb a wall of worry. So when you're fearful, that's actually a good thing. That means the stock market has room to run. And when you're elated and overconfident and think it's gonna continue forever, that's usually the worst sign because it means we're probably at the peak of a bubble. So we're gonna talk more about sentiment and how to check in with your own feelings as a stock market investor because really monitoring how you're feeling about the market is one of the most important things. So first, let me share the article with you. This article comes to us from MarketWatch and it was written by William Watts. And it's called, Time for Stock Market Investors to Shake Off the Third Recession Scare of the Cycle, Analyst Says. The bull market in equities is still standing after the third recession scare of the current cycle, says one market bull, who argued that it's time for investors to become aggressive buyers once again. Investors suffered through the third recession scare this cycle, And while all three major corrections have been larger than anticipated, absent an inversion of the yield curve that shuts down credit, the market pessimism following our non-recession crash should set the stage for new highs in 2019, wrote Tony Dwyer, analyst at Canaccord Genuity, in a Tuesday note. So I want to pause and say the yield curve we've talked about before, that's where normally a yield curve for bonds or interest rates would be upward sloping. It would be like a 45 degree angle line that you would draw on any chart. But when it comes to an inverted yield curve, it means that the short end or the end on the left is higher than the end on the right, meaning it's a downward sloping curve instead of an upward sloping curve. And that means interest rates are higher in the short term and lower in the long term. That's telling us that there's credit tightening, that interest rates are too high in the short term, and it's a good predictor of a possible recession in the future. A lot of times interest rates and yield curves invert like that before we do have a recession. Not always, but sometimes they do invert and we don't have a recession, but a lot of times they do invert and then they do predict a recession coming. So with him saying that we've had a recession scare, but we didn't have an inversion of the yield curve that shuts down credit, allows us to be more positive for stocks in 2019 is really the point that he's making there. The article goes on to say, the previous frights came in 2011 and 12 and 2015 and 16. Meanwhile, the stock market rally off the Christmas Eve lows has been extraordinary as the whoosh that created that low, Dwyer said. Stocks fell apart in the fourth quarter of last year, accelerating a decline into December that pushed the S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrial Average into a correction and knocking the tech-heavy NASDAQ composite into a bear market. Again, I want to pause. Any 20% correction is considered a bear market. 
It doesn't mean that the market has to continue in a bear market or even that it's telling us that it's an extended bear market. It just is called a bear market if we have a 20% or worse correction. The article goes on to say, the declines left major indexes negative for 2018, but the subsequent rebound saw the S&P 500 and Dow bounce nearly 16% from its December low through Monday, while the NASDAQ is up more than 18% over the same stretch. I want to pause there and just talk about what's called in stock market lingo, the dead cat bounce. That is, when you have a sharp pullback like that, the market often reverses and have has a sharp spike higher. That's why you don't want to panic and sell at the bottom. You want to wait for the spike higher if you're going to sell. But it's better to be a long-term investor and just wade through these highs and lows. Because remember, I always say about every six years we get a 10% correction and about every 10 years we get a 20% correction. So why not instead anticipate those cycles and prepare yourself for great buying opportunities when you can buy the market cheaper? All right, let's go on. Market bears remain unconvinced by the bounce, arguing that a dovish pivot by the Federal Reserve at its meeting last week will likely prove too late to halt a slowdown later this year. They argued that a decline in long-end Treasury yields signals unease over the economic outlook that will eventually come to haunt bullish investors. Dwyer argued stocks can push to new highs in 2019. One of Wall Street's most prominent bulls, he had targeted the S&P 500 to end 2018 at 3,200 before downgrading it to a range of 2,900 to 2,950 in October. The S&P ended last year at 2,506. Dwyer is targeting 2950 in 2019, a rally of around 9% from Monday's close. The S&P 500 is trading at 16.1 times his 2019 estimate of $168 in earnings per share, or EPS, which he said is toward the low end of valuations when core inflation is running between 1 and 3%. Dwyer's target is based on retesting the highs in a move similar to past non-recession post-crash environments, representing a multiple expansion to 17.5's Canaccord's 2019 earnings per share estimate. So I want to pause there and say all this talk about P.E. ratios is the price divided by the earnings gives you a number. And historically, the stock market has averaged around 16 for an average price to earnings ratio. That means that it usually sells at about 16, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. If it's selling lower than that, then it's cheaper than average. If it's selling higher than that, then it's more expensive than average. But basically what it's telling us is we're not extremely overpriced or overvalued in this market. We're right at about average PE ratios. So that means that those people that are arguing, oh, the market's so expensive, oh, it's it's too high, it's gonna crash, are not really being realistic with where valuations are. And in this article, he's also saying because we're in a low inflation environment with only 1% to 3% inflation, that means that you can have a higher P.E. ratio because you don't really have inflation debasing the value of these stocks. So I think he makes a pretty good case for that. The article goes on to say the market's fourth quarter crash suggested the Fed, which raised rates four times in 2018 and had maintained a bias toward tightening, had made a mistake. The reflex rally indicates the Fed's pivot last week to a patient data-dependent stance fixed it for the time being, he said. Moreover, the pivot suggests that an inversion of the two-year Treasury yield versus 10-year Treasury is much less likely in coming months, he said. All right, let's pause. He's saying that the inverted yield curve is much less likely because, again, it would be the two-year interest rate above the 10-year interest rate, which normally we have the 10-year above the two-year. Normally we get paid more the longer we hold on to a bond, and we would get a higher interest rate for 10 years versus only a two-year bond. But in an inverted yield curve, the two-year is higher than the 10-year. And he's saying we're not likely to get that inverted yield curve because the Fed has said they realized they made a mistake. They were tightening too quickly. 
they were tightening too much, and they realized that they need to just sit tight and be patient. The article goes on and says, an inversion occurs when the short dated yield trades above the long dated yield, a move that has reliably predicted past recessions, though Dwyer noted that after an inversion, recessions have started a median of 19 months later, leaving stocks room to continue rallying. Dwyer said that tactical indicators, price action, volatility, and sentiment, say it's time for investors to become aggressive buyers. Meanwhile, historic corporate debt issuance and merger and acquisition activity should continue to shrink the supply of equities, he said. End of article. This article was originally published on February 5th. So in there, he said that if we do get an inverted yield curve, usually the recession isn't starting for about 19 months. So we might still have a recession, but it's likely not to happen for a year and a half later. So could we have a recession in 2020 and or 2021? It's quite possible. Remember too, we also are in the presidential election cycle and the third year of the presidential election cycle is usually the best year. That's the year that we're in right now, the third year. So this is usually when interest rates are kept low, the economy is charging full steam ahead, and everything's looking good for re-election year 2020. The fourth year of the election cycle is usually the second best performing year. So that means 2020 would be a little less well performing than 2019. And then 2021 would usually be the bad year because in the first year of the presidency is when they do all the negative things that are going to impact the economy so that that gets out of the way and the economy can get chugging again by the third and fourth year for re-election time. That's just kind of the way it goes. Are these things set in stone? Absolutely not. Are they guidelines that have higher odds than other things? Yes. Are they things that have happened in the past that we can look back at cycles and say, well, this is what's happened in the past. This may be a guide that we can use for the future. Absolutely. In fact, one of my favorite indicators is the January barometer, and that is about how the month of January goes. First of all, the first week of the year, a lot of people say sets the tone for the rest of the year. So looking at the first five days of the year, if you have a positive return, it tells you the odds are that the stock market for the year will be up. It's just that the odds have worked that way. More times than not, it's been true. Then you can look at the next 27 days and see how did that perform. If the month of January is green and you have the first five days green and then the next 27 days green, meaning positive returns, in 27 out of 30 years, the entire year was up. So since we had negative performance last year, it's also less likely that we'll have negative performance this year. So since we had a positive first week and we had a positive January, again, in 27 out of 30 years, the year ended up having a positive return. Can we guarantee it's going to be a positive return for 2019? No, we can't. But we can look at these indicators. I think they're fun to talk about and look at, and they just are one thing that can help us navigate. I talk about indicators because that's really what we have to use with investing. You see, as investors, we can't always see the future clearly. We can't always see what's coming ahead. And certainly we don't have a crystal ball, but we can rely on cycles that repeat. We can rely on some past indicators and we have to look at our current economic indicators. Those are things we're looking at all the time. Things like inflation, earnings rates, revenues. We're looking at GDP. We're looking at consumer confidence. We're looking at the jobs rate. Those are all the newsy things that Wall Street loves to talk about. And I describe it as the time I was up in an airplane and a friend of mine was the pilot and wanted me to pilot the plane. And I actually sat in the pilot seat, but was shocked because when I looked through the windshield, I couldn't see a thing. It was all cloudy. We were all in just white clouds everywhere. Can you imagine driving your car and you can't see where you're going? It's the worst 
feeling. And that's how it was on the plane. And knowing that we were going hundreds of miles an hour, I was terrified. But he explained to me, they use the instrument panel. They use their indicators to show how they're doing, if you're flying correctly, if you're level, if you're going the right way, the right direction. It's the same way with the stock market. We can't clearly see the future, but we can see indicators that we can use. And those indicators tell us what's going on. One of those indicators is an inverted yield curve or a yield curve that has normal steepness. It's about interest rates going up. It's about inflation. So we've talked about several indicators in this article. And what this article really said to me is that things are looking pretty good. I think there's reason to be positive, but I also think that one of the best buying opportunities we're going to have for the year might just be coming in this month of February. And that's just what all my cycle information is telling me. So if we have a big down day, don't be surprised because I'm expecting a pretty big one in February. And I think that there may be enough fear where some people are going to be throwing in the towel and panicking But if you're smart and if you have some cash in your portfolio, that might just be a great day to buy. So checking in with yourself and how you're feeling about your investments might sound like a crazy thing. And I'm not really a person that talks about feelings and investing in the same sentence, but I guess I just did. It's really called sentiment. And sentiment is people get too excited or they get too pessimistic. And when you can get in touch with how you're feeling about something, it can often be a proxy for how everyone is feeling about something. I shared with you that Bitcoin investor who just was over the top crazy about Bitcoin and had to buy, even though he was pretty sure he was going to lose money. He was so crazed about it. He just couldn't take it anymore and had to buy it. Those were his words. Checking in with how you're feeling about the stock market is one of the most important things you can do. It's not only the stock market, it's the real estate market, it's any investment, it's Bitcoin, it's any investment. Again, I don't recommend Bitcoin, but I'm just saying, you can check in with how you're feeling about something. If you're feeling super elated, it might mean that it's fully valued at that time. And if you're feeling really pessimistic, it might be that that's just about to turn the corner because that's usually about what happens. Just as you hate an investment, you're ready to give up on it, throw in the towel, that's usually about the time it's just about ready to turn the corner and pick back up. Why? Well, because if it's that out of favor, it's probably really a bargain. And people start to look for bargains to be defensive with their money, to be cautious with their money, to be selling high and buying low, especially institutional investors are looking for those big bargains all the time. So if they're seeing that everyone is throwing something away, well, maybe it's time for them to pick some up in their portfolio. When you can get in touch with how you're feeling, whether you're feeling too positive that you think the stock market is definitely going to continue to go up, that's when you need to check yourself and say, hmm, wow, I really am feeling super confident about this. Maybe this is a time to lighten up and sell some things and sell into this strength. You also recognize that you're becoming a good investor when you are excited about prices going down rather than fearful. Because when you're excited that prices are going down, it means you just can't wait to buy something on sale. You can't wait to buy it cheaper. You can't wait to buy it on that dip because you know there's going to be a dead cat bounce and you're going to get the whole spring back. So these are the kinds of things you want to check in with yourself. You want to check around with other people and what they're saying. You want to sort of take the temperature of the sentiment of the markets. And that happens in any investment, and it's just a really good thing to do. So I wanted to share this with you today. I hope you enjoyed us talking about sentiment and indicators, and I'm feeling really positive for this year. I do think we've got some pullbacks coming that are going to be amazing buying opportunities. Becoming great with sentiment is one of the most important things you can do to become a master investor. So start checking in with how you're feeling, checking in with how confident you are about your investments or how bearish you are or scared or 
pessimistic you are about your investments, and that is one of the best indicators that you've got. If we haven't yet connected on Instagram, go on over to instagram.com forward slash Linda P. Jones and get your daily wealth tips. My book, You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now is back in stock on Amazon. People are loving the book. They're loving the Wealth Heiress checklist to make sure they're doing all the right things for their wealth building. They're loving the Millionaire Action Plan to make sure they're on track to make their million or your next million. It's getting really great reviews and I so appreciate all of you who have left a review. And speaking of reviews, we still have our review contest going. That's right, our contest is still going and you have an opportunity to win 25 prizes. 11 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets, valued at $197, 11 of my Wealth Heiress books, personalized however you'd like, and three people will have a half-hour wealth mentoring session with me, valued at $500. All you have to do is leave a podcast review that'll get your name in the drawing five times, a book review will get your name in the drawing seven times, and if you do both, your name is in the drawing 10 times. And those of you who have already left reviews, thank you so much. You're entered into the drawing as well. Thank you to those of you who have completed the survey. It seems like we've had more women complete the survey than the men. So men, I hope you will complete the survey as well as the women. And let me know what you're thinking about the podcast. And it asks what you're struggling with so that I can address topics that are of more interest to you. So take three minutes, please, to fill out the survey and let me know all about you. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.